my introduction to Hope in the Gate actually came from John Ashman. Uh, I've known John for years, served on their board, and he told me about this thing that we're doing out at Amy Grant's farm. Would you like to come out and see what's going on? And so I jumped at the chance. John Ashman and Bruce Koblish really introduced this idea of going out to a farm, Amy Grant's farm, and taking our life recovery participants and having a retreat and really discovering their name, their interests, their background, their problems, what brought them to the rescue mission. I knew what they were endeavoring to do with the women from Nashville that were going to be coming there. Here was an opportunity to usher people into the presence of Jesus through the serenity of the farm, the surroundings there, having other people invest in the lives of the women. And I thought, this is just a slam dunk. I hope it comes off as well as I envision it coming off. I was a bit skeptical because we do three to four retreats a year with our life recovery participants. And so I didn't really understand or see how this would be different. The uniqueness of this particular retreat were the participants sitting down with writers and performers and telling their story to them. And then the writers taking that information and putting that to song. The biggest thing is I think they felt so welcomed when they arrived. I really think that made them feel safe to where they could uh, allow themselves to be a little vulnerable in sharing their story. They were so transparent. They were just openly sharing about their hardships and the trauma that they experienced in a life. In our setting, sometimes they're so guarded that you know they don't trust people, and so they really aren't that open. I mean, I think coming here, you could just tell how relaxed they were. They just felt free to, to be who they are. It wasn't just therapy, and it wasn't just counseling. It was a time to just live. It not only met, but it exceeded my expectations. The intimate setting where the musicians were performing, that was just magical. What a great spot to do a concert. The caliber of the musicians, excellent. I mean, they were as good as you would see anywhere. But then I started listening to the lyrics, and I'm a toe-tapping kind of a guy, so oftentimes I'm guilty of not even paying attention to the lyrics, but the words were compelling. I watched the ladies as they heard the different performers singing the song, and you could see on the faces, you could see their eyes light up, and they're saying, well, that was me. I, you know, they're, they're singing my song. And then you just watch this thing happen. The women got up, and it's like all of a sudden they were empowered to be something that they didn't feel empowered to be before they got there. I could see they were saying to themselves, we matter. We actually matter to someone. The ladies felt dignity, and I saw hope in their faces. I saw them embracing hope. I saw hope in the way they carried themselves. I thought if we do get the opportunity to do this, we certainly need to take advantage of it because it helps us do what we in Rescue are trying to do. We sow seeds, we set the table. We can't guarantee what people will eat, but we can sure make it look appealing. And this seemed like it had everything needed to make that happen. Hi. Hi, Andy. Hi, Andy. How are you doing? I'm good. good. I'm glad you're here. Thank you, ma'am. People who aren't prone to participating so much in things are participating like crazy. People who have been more apt to sequester some of their stories are sharing like crazy. Laughter is taking place all throughout the day. And here, all the distractions are, are gone. And they're able to focus on each other, building community uh, and a peaceful environment that allows them to worship God and His creation. So this wasn't just another outing. This was a place to somewhere special. So I would dare say that the work that we do in rescue, providing meals and shelter, those are essentials. But if we're gonna help someone be all that they can be, we've gotta step outside the boundaries of what can happen under normal mission confines or circumstances, if you will. Life recovery, going from just surviving into thriving, that's the story that I'm excited that we're telling. We're pulling back the curtains so other people in other communities can see what is happening in their local rescue mission. Not just food, clothing, and shelter, as important as they are, but life change is happening. Recovery is happening. People are putting their homes back together, putting their lives back together. 
we are telling that story for every rescue mission. What Amy and, and John and the association are doing, it fits the bill 100%. And it's such a small investment for such an amazing return in the lives of the people that we're all trying to sow seeds into. That's not the end of my story. That's not where the period goes. Hi, I'm Bruce Kobelish, the Hope in the Gate facilitator for CityGate Network. We've now done two of these very powerful retreats for CityGate Network member organizations. And three, plus a larger festival, are planned for this year. But here's what's really exciting. We know everybody can't make the trip to Tennessee, so we're getting ready to take this on the road in the days ahead and hold similar retreats for member organizations in different places throughout the country, with many of these same musical artists participating. Watch for upcoming announcements about when and where these will be held. And if waiting is not your thing and you want to be among the first to bring something like this to your area, email me and we can begin the conversation.